welcome to Two Girls One Pod. Two Girls Today is me, and uh, it's my solo app. Do you love it? It's Tuesday, and I love it. So I am recording from Wurundjeri Country. I'd just like to remind you all to always know. God, I sound like such a mum, but always know the land you're on. What land are you on? DM me and tell me. I've had a great weekend. I caught up with people, had some lovely, you know, things, uh, (laughs) food-based. You can't go wrong. You know, I'm just so glad I don't diet anymore because what a waste of time that is. What a waste of your life when you could be eating food the entire time. I sent off my two new fosters to their new home. But guess what? It didn't work out. I'm going to pick them up this after, straight after this record. I'm going to pick them up. Well, the lady has a cat and it was actually fine when we got there, but the cat has attacked one at a time. And these poor babies, they are just not made for recovering with confidence because they come from puppy mills. They're used to cowering when something goes wrong. They cower together and they haven't got the background of experience. So I am going to pick them up and I really feel for this poor woman. She's so lovely and it it really wasn't something we were, it was something we were worried about but not really because the cat has been with her two previous rescue dogs. But you know what? I said to her this morning when we made the decision, because she didn't make the decision, she was like, I'll still keep trying. And then I spoke to the foster lady, the woman who started our agency, and we kind of made the decision together that it's not worth putting them through the trauma of, you know, they're already six. Um, So what we've done is we've told her, and we mean it, we're going to pop her at the top of the list for a foster, for an adoption with a dog who has been with a cat and it's going to be perfect. She she cried, you know, and it breaks my heart when this, and this is why it's so incredibly important to adopt your dogs and adopt your, but you know what? There's one thing that I've learned and the head of the agency was talking as well. We have completely stopped judging people for surrendering their animals because, you know, a lot of people say, oh, dogs are for life, cats are for life. Sometimes circumstances happen and they're not in the right place anymore to be in that home. It is okay to surrender your pet. It is okay to give your pet to someone else or, you know, a family member if circumstances arrive in that sense. So, I just wanted to say, like, I don't want to judge people anymore. I don't want to judge. I used to be that, you know, oh, how could you give up, you know, would you give up your child? Which, you know, <laughs> sounds dumb, but wouldn't it be good if sometimes we could give up children and put them in the right home? Because sometimes they're in a bad house. They're in a bad fit for the parents that they've been born with. But we don't do that. We just, you know, we, anyway. So that's that's what is happening. And things happen, things change, and that's the world that we live in, isn't it? It's, it's the life. It's That's living. So I'm going to have a Jones today. What am I jonesing about? This is a, t- <laughs> I'm going to give you a tale. I'm going to tell you a tale, forewarn you, tell you what to do if you ever get in a situation like I did. I've been wanting a new car for a while, um, saved my money, put all my little dollars away and just it's been about a year now since I've been looking car sales is where I was mostly looking um and I would favorite my ones you know until they get sold (laughs) sometimes I'd go and you know get right down to it and then go no um I was really good about it wasn't in a rush and that's the biggest thing that everyone says to you. Be patient, the right car, you know, just make sure it's the car that you want. Anyway, one of one particular type of car. So I would just specify that. So they would come through all the time. There'd always be something wrong. So I went and did a um, test drive. I was test driving two. They were identical, but different with kilometres. Both through dealers. I didn't want to do a private. I've done private before. And I'll tell you right now, I have been duped. I bought a lemon. The last car that I went private, I bought a lemon. The second car after that, sorry, the car after that, that I bought was through a dealership. And I found that they, 
tried to swindle me a little bit after the purchase, um, I fought back and they were, you know, I, fortunately I had the proof that they were telling me I didn't have and I did. So this time I was like, I don't want to go through anything. I really don't want to go through all of that hoo-ha. I want to go through a dealership, get it done. You know when you're a woman and you go to a dealership and you're on your own, it's just men and, oh, it's exhausting. It is so exhausting to say, like, it's just an energy I don't like. I walk in, it's um, like, it's like you're walking into a wall of bullshit and it stinks. <laughs> you're like, oh, I'm stuck in the wall of poo. Uh, it happened again. I hate to say it. It happened again. But I fought again. And this is my advice, I guess, is my jonesing this week is is f- for you guys, my advice that don't give up, don't let them walk all over you because they really will. I asked someone, well, I actually asked my mechanic who I really trust. He's very good. He does things for free. Like he'll just send me on my way. No, 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 no. It's fine. It's done. Go, go. Because he knows that I'll always bring my business to him and I'll always recommend him to everyone. He's just an honest guy. Um, And he always says, this is an industry full of dishonest people. He goes, I don't know how they sleep at night. I honestly don't. And I was like, I don't either. It's the last industry, that and real estate agents, where they really truly get away with um, and off, get off on lying and scamming you somehow. And I don't understand. I mean, maybe something bad has happened to these people in their lives where they feel like they hate humanity and they just... But the mechanic said to me, it's a... He said, it's almost like a competition thing. It's like they egg each other on. Who can swindle and get the most? Oh, I'll get this one. Oh, no, she, no, she's mine, especially if it's a woman. So what ended up happening to me is I bought a car and I was really happy with it, um, but it w- did have a few more Ks on it than I probably should have. I didn't show it to my mechanic and I should have. Um, Learned lessons, but I wanted the car and, you know, when you want something, you make sure that, you know, you don't show the person that may say no. So I... Um, it turns out the whole transmission was gone, which after two months, the lights come up, you know, new cars. And this is not a new, new car, 2017. It's pretty new though. Like, so it had all of the mod cons. So those cars talk to you and they tell you, I'm not doing well. So when it told me, I went to my mechanic and he went, oh shit. And the thing is, I videoed him while he was doing the diagnostic report on it. And he he was just kept saying, oh, this is effed. This is this. Oh, shit, this is going to, oh, they knew your number, didn't they? He goes, Evie, I would never have let you buy this car. Why don't you bring it to me first? I went, because you would never have let me bought this car. But I really wish I had now. Lesson learned again. So please take, take that sage advice and take it to a, a trusted mechanic. Find yourself a trusted mechanic. The worst thing about these car sales is you don't know. You're not going to the dealership. You're going to any dealership that has a used car if you're doing a used car thing. But what I did learn is this. You have a statutory warranty for three months under Australian consumer law. And I'm really glad I found that out for myself because for three months after purchase of a secondhand car, that car has got to be the car that you were sold and told of its problems, if you weren't told of its problems and okay to still then drive off the lot with it, then it's got to be fixed. But you have to, under a consumer law, VCAT said to me, you need to give them the right to fix it. So I took it to them and they <laughs> they fixed, they said they were going to fix it. Uh, I asked them under my mechanic's advice to get a diagnostic report done immediately while I was there. And they were like, oh, we can't do that. You know, like you're a stupid woman. You don't understand, but we can't do that. And he said, they'll say that, make them give you a diagnostic report, which they didn't do. And they said, we can do it in an hour if you want to wait. Like they were playing the game. And I said, no, I'll, 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 look, I've got the diagnostic report anyway from my mechanic. So what I'll do is I'll get you to email it to me And if it's exactly the same, there won't be a problem. And it was exactly the same, but it didn't come straight away. I had to ask for it again. And then it was 
there was a just <sighs> they didn't want to fix this. They only wanted to fix that, and you know, I just kept throwing back the laws. You've got the law is on our side, and that's I guess what all I want to say is that you have to know the laws on your side. Australian consumer law is fair. Um, it's just a shit fight. And that's what the mechanic said to me. I said, why would they do it? And he said, because they rely on people not doing anything. They rely on people going away and paying for it themselves, not knowing the laws. And I was like, of course. He said, well, did you? And I said, well, yeah, I kind of did because it's happened before, but I didn't know to this extent. Um, and he said, yeah, most people don't. And most people don't want to fight because they they will use words you don't know and um, car words especially. Um, but I, I'm a stubborn old bird now. So I know what meta- mechatronics means now. <laughs> I know what a steering wheel angle sensor is now. Um, my advice to everyone is um, do your research first, get your mechanic to, it's worth the money if it does cost you money, you know, to get the NRMA or the RCV or the RCQ to come out and spend that $136 and get them to do it. I'd hate to do that three times though. Wouldn't that be a pain in the ass? But I don't know. And this is to anyone that's listening that is or works in the car dealership, shame. Shame on you if you're doing it because that's some bad juju coming your way. You can't treat people like that. It's not worth the money that you're getting from it. The commission that you're getting is is almost dirty money. So enjoy your dirty money, you greedy bastard. She male. Ooh, female. We're dreading the mail that's from the email. <laughs> that's my theme song. I'm just going to keep singing different theme songs every week, which will probably sound exactly like each other. Hey, Evie. Love the podcast. Oh, my God. Rach, did you send this? No, I sent it to myself. Just jokes. I wanted to chat to you about body image. Well, yes, you know I love it. Note, I'll be turning 50 soon. Ooh, I know what that's like too. When I was 30, I hated my body and I would look at photos of myself at 20 and go, God, I was hot. I wish I'd loved my body then. Then when I was 40, I looked at my 30-year-old photos and thought, that's pretty good. Why didn't I appreciate how good I looked then? So now I'm 50. I am wanting to change the way I view myself. I'm looking forward to 60-year-old me and she's going to think, God, you were pretty hot at 50. Look forwards. We are all only getting older. Do you have any advice? Thanks, Kathy. Oh, bloody great email, Kathy. And happy birthday soon for your 50th. Wow, what a milestone. And what an honour to get to such an incredible age because some people don't get there. That is such a <laughs> Can I just say first, I don't know what advice I have. I think about this all the time. I look at old photos of myself. <laughs> like I just put up a photo of my mum on the weekend because it was her birthday. And so that, of course, takes me down memory lane and I look at photos of me. And even six months ago, I go, oh, you're a good looking rooster, Hen. So it, it constantly, there's a euphemism that goes like this, the, that the youth is wasted on the young. And it is so true. It is not until you're older that you can appreciate all the stuff that you had when you were younger. You remember the sunscreen song, like, treat your knees well. You're going to be sad when they're gone. Um, you know, <laughs> wear a sunscreen. It was this, it was during the time of um, Baz Luhrmann's, not Strictly Ballroom, Romeo and Juliet. And it was a song because the, the kid at the end does the Prince song, love is a person. But there's a whole man doing almost like a valedictorian speech at the beginning and he was like, wear sunscreen because when you're 40 and you look 60, you know, he goes on like that. Gives very good advice. And 
I often think of it that, <laughs> you know, leave your hair alone. You're going to regret it by the time you're 40 and your hair is all fallen out. Um, I disagree with that. Like, do whatever the hell you want to your hair because your hair's fallen out anyway. Um, and you're young and you can, oh God, you don't even need youth to have a different hairstyle. Do whatever you want at any age. But do look at your body. Learn, this is my advice. And this is what I'm doing now as well. I did mention it to Rosie. I sit naked now in front of the mirror. This is something I could never do. And it is exposure therapy. And exposure therapy really works. So take photos of yourself, not nude. You don't have to do that. Um, But definitely take photos of yourself all the time, not for anyone else but you. And just look at them. Get used to seeing yourself how you are. Don't get a shock because you haven't taken a photo of yourself for 10 years and all of a sudden you're like, oh, I was so much better when I was 30. You're great right now. Yeah, things start to age, but we have got to stop thinking that's ugly or that is a bad thing. You know, right at the beginning of this, I said to Kathy, congratulations on turning 50. Some people simply don't get to do it. Some people simply don't get to have the wrinkles that other people do get to have. And it is an honour and a pleasure. And, you know, in some cultures, those lines mean so much and especially to the younger people, they can't wait. Well, they can wait, but they are so ready to have those lines on their faces or those, um, the sagging of a body, which means you've had a life and it means you've gotten to an age where you've, you've kept living and you haven't, you've seen people die around you. There's something about Western culture that we've got to smooth everything out. We've got to stop doing that because it is so beautiful to see an aging human with strength, changing things, asking for help because they can't bend over and pick something up anymore. And you've got the youth to help you do that. And in exchange, you've got an incredible wisdom to pass on to them. So have conversations with young people about what an honour it is to be the age that you are. We need to respect our elders. And, you know, that's a really old-fashioned saying. People don't respect their elders anymore. And it's I think every elder says that about the youth. <laughs> kids are not like when I was young. No, kids are never like when you were young. Um, but also they're exactly like you when you were young. You didn't care about the older people. <laughs> well, you didn't actually ever think they existed, really. But remember how much you love your grandparents and how much you love being around them and what they t- tell you. And you don't have them for long, unfortunately. So if you still have them, look how wonderful they are. And imagine <laughs> us disliking them simply because they've aged. So don't do it to yourself. That's all I've got to say about that. Useless facts with Eva Jones. <laughs> That's this week's theme song for useful facts with Evie Jones. Useless facts or useful? You be the judge. This week's useless facts comes all the way from Ireland. Did you know that <laughs> in Ireland... At some point in time, I'm going to say the 1800s, the government put a tax on your windows. If you had windows in your house, the government taxed you for it. So the more windows you had, the more tax you paid. Bastards, right? Am I right? I am right. So you know what the, you know what the Irish did? They boarded up their windows. <laughs> So no one had any light, which was all probably awful, um, but they didn't have to pay tax. So the government eventually stopped. So now, you know, you can go to Ireland and all the houses and all the buildings have windows again. But that is where the term, what term do you think comes from not having any daylight and someone steals it from you? 
daytime robbery. Daytime robbery. They were literally robbing you of your daylight. (laughs) Is it daylight robbery? Yeah, daylight robbery. Brilliant one. Short, sweet, to the point, and I got to do an Irish accent. Thank you very much. I know it's not bad. Uh, If your name's Aoife, that's my favourite Irish name. It's a lot of Aoife's in Australia now. Did you also know they say if everyone in Ireland or from Irish heritage in the world all went back to Ireland at the same time, it would sink? (laughs) I love that saying. I mean, it's just brilliant. There's that many Irish in the world. Thank you all for listening again. Happy heavenly birthday to my mum for Saturday. Love you, Susan Beryl. Miss you more than life itself. And um, I will be back on Thursday. Oh, shall I say who we've got coming on Thursday? We've got Melinda Willis from Maths Married at First Sight. And this is a good one because there's stuff she says that you all want to know. And she's going to tell. I will be in your ear holes then. Uh, rate, review, subscribe. Drop me a DM if you've got anything for the she mail, he mail, free mail, D mail, female. Uh, two girls at novapodcast.com.au. Love you. Bye.